Hey everyone, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and welcome to the Sunday Motivational Video. Every Sunday I'll be bringing you a different type of video that should improve your life and hockey career. Today we're looking at talent. Is it born or can it be grown? Welcome to OnlineHockeyTraining.com where future hockey stars come to get informed and inspired. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications or you'll be missing out. The question of talent has been a topic of conversation for decades, if not centuries, that has intrigued researchers over the years, resulting in a ton of new information on why some people reach greatness and why others don't. Talent has fascinated many, but none more than a guy named Daniel Coyle, who coincidentally just happened to write a book titled The Talent Code. So let's dive in. When I think about talent, it's usually an individual doing something spectacular, like Connor McDavid going end to end, tucking the puck effortlessly where grandma hides the cookie jar. You see something like that and you say, man, that's talent. But that's a singular event or moment in time. And that kind of talent wasn't what inspired Mr. Coyle. What drove this researcher to travel over 50,000 miles around the globe was something different. His mission was to find out how so many remote places around the world were suddenly pumping out an enormous amount of talent, which he labeled talent hotbeds. Drawing on cutting edge neurology, that's brain stuff, and firsthand research gathered on journeys to nine of the world's talent hotbeds, from the baseball fields of the Caribbean to a classical music academy in upstate New York, Mr. Coyle identifies three key elements that will allow you to develop your gifts and optimize your performance in art, music, math, and yes, hockey. Element number one, the ignition. One thing you have to understand is that when you see someone do something amazing, that's the end result of years and years of working on their craft, preparing for that moment. In a lot of cases, this could take up to 20 years until they reach the upper rung on the ladder. So how do these so-called gifted individuals maintain their focus and motivation to keep reaching for it week after week, year after year? It all starts with an ignition. The ignition is a moment in time, usually during childhood, when you see or experience something where you all of a sudden have a vision of your future self. For example, a young kid sees Johnny Goudreau for the first time as he dangles through the opposition and scores the OT winner. After, the kid says, I want to be like him, and his race to achieving begins. Talent begins with brief, powerful encounters that spark motivation by linking your identity to a high-performing person or group. We've all had a moment in time in our life where we say to ourselves, I want that, or I'm going to do that. So why do so many not reach their end destination? As Mr. Coyle puts it, people in these talent hotbeds have a different relationship with practicing. And that takes us to element number two, deep practice. As he visited talent hotbed after talent hotbed, a pattern started to emerge. There was an enormous amount of effort being displayed working on their craft. But something was different in how he was seeing these young individuals practice. There was a different focus and attention to detail. Mistakes were not viewed as a negative, but rather guideposts leading them to their final destination. Techniques like chunking individual skills together, performing new skills super slow at the start, or shrinking a playing surface down, forcing quicker decision making, were all teaching strategies he saw in his travels. Another term used a lot through the book is called myelin. So what the heck is it, and what does it have to do with skill acquisition? Welcome to Two Minute Neuroscience, where I simplistically explain neuroscience topics in two minutes or less. In this installment, I will discuss myelin. Myelin is an insulating layer that surrounds the axons of neurons. Composed primarily of lipids, myelin helps to prevent action potentials, which are the electrical signals that travel along axons, from decaying due to electrical current leaking out through the axonal membrane. Myelinated axons thus conduct action potentials more quickly and efficiently than unmyelinated axons. And because of this, many neurons in the nervous system are myelinated. Whoa, 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 way too many big words for me. Let me simplify this for you. Whenever we learn something for the first time, a new connection is made in your master computer, your brain, and it's wrapped or insulated with a material called myelin. Every time you revisit that skill in practice, you earn another layer of myelin. The more you practice, the thicker the myelin. The thicker the myelin, the faster the circuits fire, and the closer you are to what I call the automatic phase. This is where you don't have to think about what you're doing. You just do it. So what's something you've gotten to the automatic phase in? How about walking? You don't say to yourself, right foot, left foot, you just walk. The same confidence you have walking can also be attained for anything else you want in life if you put in enough deep practice and earn enough myelin. Element number three, master coaching. 
The first two-thirds of the book, Mr. Coyle talked about skill as a cellular process that grows through deep practice. He's shown how ignition supplies the unconscious energy for that growth. The last part of the book focuses on a rare group of people who have an uncanny knack for combining those forces to grow talent in others. But before we find out who these master coaches are, the talent code first shows us who they aren't. When most of us think of a master coach, we think of a great leader, a person of steadfast vision, battle-tested savvy, and commanding eloquence, like a captain of a ship. Instead, these teachers and coaches Mr. Coyle met were quiet, even reserved. They were mostly older, many had been teaching for 30 to 40 years. They possessed the same sort of gaze, steady, deep, and unblinking. They listened far more than they talked. They spent most of their time offering small, targeted, highly specific adjustments. They had an extraordinary sensitivity to the person they were teaching, customizing each message to each student's personality. It wasn't so much about the skill being taught, it was about connecting with the individual. Once that relationship is established, these talent whisperers cultivate the student's passion, drive, and hunger and teach them how to acquire new skills faster than others and what habits need to be in place in order to have a chance to reach their long-term objective, which requires a lot of deep practice and myelin production. Many master coaches are asked if they can predict who will make it to the top. Cello specialist Hans Jensen said it best, when I teach, I give everyone everything. What happens after that? Who can know? If you're chasing after something big, then you'll want to pick up a copy of The Talent Code. It's a great read and has had a huge positive impact on my coaching career. Thank you, Daniel Coyle. Well, that's a wrap for this video. If you liked it and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone in your hockey circle. Coach would appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.